Okay guys, here we are again and we are going to continue looking at Cuba. Remember, we are on chapter 3.2. We are looking at how the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, right? And the previous chapter, we already looked at why the Soviets installed missiles on Cuba, right? And why the Cubans allowed, cash, uh, sorry, allowed Khrushchev to install missiles on Cuba. So today, what we're going to be looking at is the US response. Okay, how will the US respond to this? And of course, the subsequent Soviet and Cuban actions. Okay, which will bring us, by the end of the chapter, the end point is that we will see the crisis about to It will be on the brink, okay, the crisis um, threatens to evolve into a global conflict, okay? And uh, you can see it here, uh, escalation of tensions, you can see... Um, for points 2A and 2B, we are looking at what the Americans did and why they did it. And after that point C, we are looking at how the Soviets responded. Okay, so that is the outline for what we are looking at today. So, um, remember what did the Soviets do? They secretly placed nuclear missiles on Cuba, right? Um, what happens is that the Americans discover them. How do they do this? There is a spy plane um, that takes photos and they discover that they are nuclear warheads on Cuba, okay? They can see them in the trailers uh, and being transported, things like that, okay? And of course, the Americans are horrified. Oh, dear me, they are nuclear missiles on Cuba, okay? The point I want to emphasize from this slide is that if you look at the second point here, it says Kennedy's own response would then cause them, uh, Cuba and the US to make their counter move. So it's move and then counter move, okay? Move to counter move. And I describe this as an action-reaction process. Okay, so I do something, you do something, I do something, you do something. Now, this is not new. We also have seen this before. In fact, this characterizes the Cold War. It characterizes superpower interaction, right? Uh, remember what we have seen in Europe? In Europe, uh, we saw a, you, you start the Marshall Plan and the Truman Doctrine, I come up with Comic-Con, uh, I put in the Berlin blockade, then you conduct the Berlin airlift, so on and so forth, okay? And all this results in escalation. Uh, if you don't want to use the escalation, intensify also. This is an increase in scale, okay? Or actually on volume also can, because uh, it's intensify just means it gets worse, right? Okay? So... Take away action reaction process. I do something, you do something. Okay? So, now let's get to the meat of it. What did the Americans do? Obviously, if you discover secret missiles, right, near uh, your homeland, you assume that it is an offensive move. You will feel threatened. Okay? Uh, are they right to perceive so? Yes la. Remember what is Khrushchev's original intention is to balance the missile gear, right? Which means, you threaten me, I will threaten you. Okay? Now, Khrushchev, of course, says that these are purely defensive. Is this true? Um, to some extent, yes. Are they defensive? Yes. Um, because they are supposed to help the USSR... Uh, catch up, right? On the missile gap. But this also has the effect of uh, being an aggressive move. Obviously, you put missiles near me, okay? So the counterbalancing is reasonable. That is a defensive intention. But the way that it is done is to use offensive tools. Nuclear missiles, uh, you can't say that nuclear missiles are defensive weapons, right? Okay. And so, the Americans face a possibility of a first strike. We've talked about first strike previously. First strike means that uh, I hit you so hard and so fast, you have no time to respond, and that is why I win a nuclear war. Okay, So, the Americans' position, what we take away from this slide is that the American position is problematic. They must respond. So, now the problem that the US faces 
is the possibility of a nuclear first strike. Okay, so therefore, what they might, what they need to do, okay, is to reduce the threat, right? Or to somehow neutralize. The best case is to neutralize this nuclear threat. But is this possible? Okay, what we're going to look at now is to uh, look at what the Americans are going to do. The first thing they must do is to prioritize to prevent any kind of nuclear war. I do not want shooting to take place, correct? Because why? Uh, remember, we talked about a fear of MAD. What is MAD? Mutually Assured Destruction. Remember, we've talked about this. Um, I shoot a nuclear missile, you shoot two, you shoot two, I shoot five, you, I shoot five, you shoot ten. Uh, event, um, the logical conclusion is, of course, as long as one person fires a nuclear missile, everybody will fire. Okay? You fire everything. Um, and that is why the world will end in nuclear fire, right? So that is called mutually assured destruction. Um, the Americans don't want this. Okay? So let's have a look. Um, we're going to look at a table of things that they can do. And we're going to look at them one by one. Okay? So I'm going to take you uh, from the top to the bottom. So American options for response now. Um, first, they could. We are, we're going to look at each of them and then we're going to evaluate. Okay? They can do nothing. Um, it means that they will accept the Soviet presence in their geopolitical backyard, right? But this will count as a uh, political loss. Uh, and also means that if I have the missiles there, um, it means that there is a nuclear threat. So obviously, this is not a good option. Okay, uh, I could use diplomatic measures. Um, I can say, hey, you should take away the missiles. Uh, but as we know, this is ineffective. Um, there is no guarantee of success. It does not achieve my aim because the Soviets still can fire the missiles anytime. Okay, I could approach Castro. Um, and I can get Castro to say, hey, please, lah, brother, you, 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 you take the missiles away. Um, but this is impossible. Um, not happening. Why? Because we know that Castro sees the US as a threat, right? So he already was a victim. Uh, well, they already tried Operation Mongoose, the Bay of Pigs. There's no way they're going to cooperate. Okay. Um, okay, but I am the USA. I could invade Cuba, right? I am the greatest military power on earth. I can remove the missiles. I can overthrow Castro by force. Okay, but again, this um, this is bad press, right? Bad political press. It puts me in a bad light. Um, I would seem like the aggressor. Furthermore, there is no guarantee of removing missiles. Why? Let me explain. Um, if I, if I'm Cuba, or if I'm the USSR, and I see a US invasion force coming to take away my missiles, what am I going to do? Just sit there and let you invade me? No, firstly, I'm going to counterattack, and I am going to launch the missiles, and I can launch the missiles before you can reach my missile launch sites, which um, basically means that invading Cuba might mean um, it is increasing the chance that the USSR will fire their missiles. Okay? Now, um, I can launch an airstrike. I can try to destroy the missiles. That's, that sounds good. But again, there is no guarantee that I can find and destroy all the missiles. Um, here, we're not just talking about a single weapon. Uh, for a nuclear missile to launch, there must be a nuclear missile launch site, right? Uh, there's a whole system in place where you fire the missile, you give it targeting guidance, so on and so forth. So, of course, these are well hidden. So there's no guarantee that even if I'm US, I can launch an airstrike and destroy all the missile launch sites. Okay, what if there's one that I haven't discovered, which means the missiles will come, right? So, um, there's no guarantee. So the last option, which is the option that they're going to take, is this thing called a naval blockade. Okay, what is a naval blockade? Let me explain it. Let me draw here. Um, here we have the sunny island of Cuba. Okay, to the north we have Florida. Uh, to the east, uh, we have the Atlantic Ocean. What a naval blockade does is that the USA, or rather the US Navy, places its ships around Cuba, forming a perimeter. 
of course not literally end to end line to line but here what happens is that anything that comes in and out of cuba i can pick up this is a blockade okay blockade means i block ah, i block your entry ah. naval just means the the way that it is done right it's like the berlin blockade right so now um if you find it if you try to sail anything in i can stop you whether it is uh, by aircraft carrier or by uh, patrol ships and so on and so forth. So if I have a Soviet um, ship which is trying to bring in troops or weapons, it is impossible for them to bring in anything without me noticing. And so what this means is that I'm preventing any kind of known uh, nuclear missiles, any possibility of more nuclear weapons is eliminated. Okay? At the same time, is it aggressive? No, uh, well, sort of, but I'm not attacking you. I'm just parking my ships there. Okay, and so by preventing further deployment, what this does is that it limits the extent of the conflict. Yes, I know it is launching ships, but this is the best that it can do. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the option that is taken. Okay, let's have a look at why they take this option. Okay, um, firstly, it buys time for negotiation. Okay, um, it's like if you get into a fight with your friend, okay, then you're uh, upset and you start arguing straight away, it's going to be bad. What you should do, life skill, is to, hey guys, you say, bro, I know you're upset, I'm also very upset. Why don't we take a chill pill? You know, tomorrow then we talk about it, right? So it, it lowers tensions and you can negotiate, you can talk about it. Okay, um, the second point, prevent an increase of Soviet military presence. Uh, we have already discussed, I already told you. Okay, and most importantly, it did not involve any shooting. Okay, remember just now we talked about the airstrike, la, invade Cuba. All this increases the possibility of a hot war, um, which is not what they want. Okay, so this seems to be the best possible response. And why did they do this? Okay, is this thing called brinksmanship? Okay, um, it's basically trying to get as much as you can, right? Uh, imagine it this way. Um, this is me. Let me tell you a story. Um, and this is my sister, right? So when she's very young, uh, I will go and disturb her, right? And how do you disturb your sister? You must keep like poking her or doing some terrible thing, like, right? And, but you know that if, let's say this is her tolerance meter, okay? Then you disturb a bit, you come here. Disturb a bit, come here. Disturb a bit, come here. What's the danger line? The danger line is here. Sorry, sorry, let me give you this diagram. Why? At this point, she will cry. And what will crying will result in? It will result in uh, your parents caning you, right? Or at least for me, lah. Okay? So, what is brinksmanship? Brinksmanship, uh, means, uh, I keep disturbing uh, until not enough. Not enough. Just before it touches the final mark. Okay? So, that I can get as much out of it as possible without risking any kind of danger. Okay? Of course, the closer I go, the more I win. But it also means the uh, greater the danger I have, the greater the risk I am at of being cane. Okay? So, in this case, uh, brinksmanship here is not about the risk of being cane. Um... Here, the risk in the Cuban Missile Crisis is about starting a nuclear war, okay? Uh, but that's what they're trying to do, lah, okay? Because they still want to get as much as they can as out of the Cuban Missile Crisis as possible, okay? So this is what the Soviets, uh, Americans did. They said, how oh, we found the nuclear missiles. Mm, then they, of course, they condemned it. You can go and read the speech by Kennedy. Then they say, uh, we are going to blockade you. And they mobilized their troops. That means they readied the troops for war. This is like a backup backup insurance policy, right? Okay. So they are forcing the Soviets to trying to force the Soviets to give in first. Okay, it's a Mexican standoff. What's a Mexican standoff? Basically, I have point a gun at you and you point a gun at me, and we both look at each other and we say, You put down your weapon. Right? So I will say, You put down. And then you will say, No, you put down. What is the solution? 
the solution is both of us to put down at the same time. So I'll say, okay, let's put it down at the same time. Then you say, okay. But the problem is, neither of us is going to do that. Because once one person starts to put down before the other person, uh, the person who is not putting down his weapon has a advantage, right? So what's the result? Nobody will put down their weapons. Ah, we'll just continue to stay in that terrible position. Okay, so that is a Mexican standoff. Okay, you can go ahead and uh, Google this phrase. Okay? So the Americans, yeah, this is a very tricky situation. Okay? Um, and how do the Cubans and the Soviets respond? Okay? Um, Khrushchev says, oh, how can you do this? This is very aggressive. Okay, this is an act of war, um, which is very ironic because um, he says that putting nuclear missiles on Cuba is a defensive measure. Okay? Um... Okay, so it, there, there appears to be some kind of uh, discrepancy here. But what am I, why, why am I pointing this out? So Khrushchev, okay, is claiming both um, offensive. Uh, he, he seems to have no clear, he seems to have contradicting himself, right? He says the blockade is offensive. But he says nukes are defensive. Eh? There is a contradiction here. But why is there this contradiction? It is because he is trying to justify himself. He is trying to um, maintain the political high ground. Yes, yes. You can make all your I have the high ground jokes. Okay, but that is what he is trying to do. He's not trying to lose face. He's not trying to uh, lose the larger ideological battle. Okay. So they were also ready for war, but what's going to happen? Okay. So Castro also mobilizes his troops. He also gets them ready for war. Um, the truth is that Castro cannot really do anything because he's too small, right? Cuba, Cuba is not going to influence anything. So what's the situation now? Okay. The situation now is that everybody has troops ready for war. So the USA, the USSR... Cuba, everybody's mobilized. Okay. Um, we have nuclear missiles on the ground. Okay. We have the nuclear powers ready. Okay. But nobody wants to put down their weapons. Okay. Nobody wants to back down. Nobody's going to say, okay, okay, okay. You know what? I give in. I give in. I give in. Okay. And this is where the crisis is. Okay. This is what is. Um, this is where the tensions are. Lah. Okay, that the, the, the conflict is has built up to this point. Okay. So in the next um sub chapter 3.3 we'll see how the conflict um came to a head and then how it is resolved. Alright? Okay, see you.